the best new patient generator in decades, is virtual reality for dental patients. Opera VR, completely transforming the patient experience, truly gives people a remarkable experience. We can completely transform the patient's awareness, transport them outside of the operatory. Go to operavr.operadds.com. Welcome to the Operatory Podcast. This is your host today, Dave Pryor. With me today, I have Dr. Brian Laskin. How are you doing, Brian? I'm good. I'm ready to bury some dinosaurs, oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Thank goodness. And Dr. Bush, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. That is awesome. Well, the reason that one of the great things about sitting in the um, operatory with Dr. Laskin here is that I provide things from the patient perspective. So my perspective is the most valued perspective in the operatory. So I get very excited about being here with Dr. Laskin and yourself today. So the reason that I asked you to come on the podcast today is this. When you and I talked a, a few weeks ago, um, you had become an Opera DDS customer and Opera VR customer, but um, you'd asked me to take a look at your website and see what you had going on. And I was stunned at the amount of uh, duplication in experience that you had to Dr. Laskin. And so I thought it'd be a fantastic idea to get the two of you in the same room at the same time. So thank you for being here. First time ever. Are you afraid that you're with two dentists? At the same time, though, <laughs> I, I'm I'm definitely afraid that I'm outnumbered, and I, I know the egos that I'm working with, so I'm very I'm very nervous. Oh, I think with two of us and one of you, I think the egos are just about. <laughs> yeah, it, it does about even out. Yeah, let's start with this. Um, tell me a little bit about your practice, Doctor Bush. I I know that um, you know you've got a really growing practice you you're you're heavy into technology and that's what we want to talk to you about today but tell me a little bit about your practice what you've got going on down there sure we're in Kansas City Missouri um, we're right there smack dab in the middle of the country so uh, we're I've been practicing now for 30 years and I have uh, one partner that we that I added about five years ago and been very fortunate right out of the gate um we've been successful and we're um all into the digital technology and the practice i started back in 1989 and been practicing now for 30 years and i feel more energetic and more excited about going to work every day than i've ever have and that's because the technology we're dealing with is allowing us to educate the patient and instead of me having to tell them what they need they're asking me with things that they want because I'm making it so obvious that they want to know how they can fix things and make things better. Well, that's awesome. So tell me this, do you think that um, like early adoption of technology for your practice has helped you grow? I think in, in my case, absolutely. And some of the things that are forgotten if you are an early adapter is you get things obviously you get them first but you get patients uh know that you're out there to try and improve their experience um all the time and then once you get in with certain companies and you become known as an early adapter you get to try things out before everybody else does and and seriously they'll they'll give you give you things to try um they discount things so there's a lot of advantages and upsides to being an early adopter, I wish more doctors would consider that because the patients appreciate you going out to, to get the best, to, to try things and to try and improve their experience. That, that's really cool. So um, one of the things that um, I, I really look at with this particular podcast is that we appeal a lot to younger, newer dentists in the industry as well as seasoned veterans. And um, the younger dentists are really looking for guidance and, and leadership and, and understanding of how did you get to where you got to. So in, yeah. go ahead. Uh, back in 1989, the, the dream of a digital chart was just still a dream, but I, but I had it at that point. The only thing back then was the trophy digital sensor that was available. And then there was a company called ICS out of California that had somewhat of a digital chart, but it was way before its time. Um, and they, unfortunately, 
a year into um, using the product, they went bankrupt. But um, to the younger dentist, I, I think the digital backbone of your practice, your biggest and most important choice is going to be your practice management system. And then once that's in place and you get comfortable with that, then you can start to add on the digital parts to that. And me being an early adopter, you kind of have to take things uh, a little at a time because things become expensive and you want to buy the things in the proper order. Um, but we started adding things on slowly from, we started with digital radiography back in the day and then slowly moved into CAD cam technology, laser technology. So every year we usually budget, and I would say this to the younger dentist, try to budget five to 6% of your collections for technology, whether it be replacing your treatment room computers every three to five years or, um, buying a, a piece of technology. But I can tell you that as far as the digital technology goes, as you buy things, it's going to make you more productive and more efficient. You just have to learn it and use it. Well, you've, you've said a lot of great things. And, and, and I, this is this is Brian Laskin interjecting. And I, I mean, I so first off, kudos to you for having a partner that was successful, because I know there's a lot of dentists out there. I've talked to a lot who've been like, I can't get a partner. I've had eight of them, and they, they all, they're all horrible. And, and, and I always want to say, uh, maybe you should, you know, if they're, in a, like if you have 10 failed relationships, there's one common denominator, right? <laughs> uh, and so, right. so probably having you have had a successful partner is in large part, obviously to you. So kudos to that. And also you talked about the timeline Thank of you. like what, what technologies to implement. And that's right up. We're, we're actually, we're just launching that right now. It's, it'll be available now, uh, upgrade dental.com. And my, the very first thing that we have that you should implement is exactly what you said, digital radiography. So we're, we're like-minded. That, that's fantastic. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is I think you are probably an even more rare unicorn in that when you're talking about early adopters, you are actually talking about a budget. Uh, I am an early adopter, and I have never budgeted anything in my life, which is which is to my detriment. So so that's a, a huge, a huge piece of uh, great advice that you're giving, I, I feel. They're like, actually, look at a budget and go, oh, guess what? There's going to be a positive ROI, so I'll buy it, you know, and, which is which is the world that it's worked out for me. But uh, but uh, I think it is probably a wise move to actually budget for it. I think so, too. Thank, thanks for the kind words. Yeah, the one of the things that, for me, when I come onto the podcast, I always get the um, – I'm going in blind. I never know what Brian's going to ask me. And so Brian went into this one blind. You went into this one blind. And I knew I knew that this was exactly what was going to happen, that you guys were going to have exactly the same thoughts on these stuff. I'd like to ask the, the follow-up question on the partner piece because we went yeah. over that quickly. And um, I've, I've had uh, several dentists. Currently, I work with eight dentists. And I have not had that issue uh, of of having fail, failed uh, associates that I know a lot of other people have had, and it's probably just because somebody else selected the associates, so they're great. But any any words of advice? Because there's probably right now we're we're in an era of dentistry that's shifting from single practice to multi practice. I think it's in about two years. It's projected that more than fifty percent of the, the practitioners will be in group practice, meaning more two or more. Uh, so there's there's going to be a lot of dentists starting to work together. So any 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 thoughts that you have on how people can partner up successfully? Yeah, our my situation was unique in that um, Dr. Van Eper and Tucker uh, he was a patient. His family um, this goes back to the the old trying to inspire young young people. He was ten or eleven in the practice, and I, I was, had a good. Um, rapport with him. I said, you should be a dentist someday. So the, the funny part was he ended up going to dental school and then called me for a job, you know, uh, 14, 15 years later, um, after getting dental school. So I just said, yes, I, you know, I, I felt a little bit responsible for his career path. So I, I just got very fortunate, but I think, um, you got to look at a partnership like a marriage. You got to find, try to find the right person right out of the gate. And I don't have the name of, um, um, there's a, a te- not a test, but it's, it's kind of looks at your personality types and matching up with the right personality, um, is, is key. Cause you got to get along. But, um, our, our 
chemistry is great. Um, there's a great book called Rocket Fuel that talks about um, that type of interaction and getting the right people together. Rarely are successful people by themselves, um, especially the creative ones. Uh, the Ray Kroc with McDonald's, it was him and his brother. Walt Disney, it was him and his brother was more of the numbers guys. Um, and Dr. Mike Schuster, who still lectures, it stuck with me going to some of his lectures over time is that um, you have to you have to be able to flex and you have to be able to to kind of roll with the punches um, whether it be with your partnership and when you get into it you just have to be flexible with things and, and not to be too um, inflexible so I guess that would be the advice is go into it like a marriage and and make sure that you pick the right one and um, there's no guarantees. I've been surprised along the way with, with dental personnel and hygienists and assistants. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've had, you know, uh, surprising stories there. And, and uh, But I, I, I can't think of a greater profession than dentistry. And I'm, I'm excited for our new colleagues that are getting out of school. And I, I think they're going to have a, a wonderful time. I, I can back you up on the, the book Rocket Fuel, I, you know, what, from my perspective, Rocket Fuel is about how a visionary works with sort of a somebody who it's called an implementer, or uh, it's not an implementer. It's a uh, uh, well, it's, it's in 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 action, an implementer. How so? How visionaries work with people who actually execute on things like operations, and I am certainly on one end of that spectrum where I I'm more of a thinker, less of a implementer. Uh, although I. Do, I can do it when I when I need to, but my problem is that I like like we're talking about with early adoption. If I think too far ahead, so some of the things have to be filtered through somebody else, <laughs> right? Which is kind yeah. of what rocket fuel is about, right? And so my guess is that we're on the same page with that. And the other thing, uh, Mike Schuster would say, I mean, you can't when you get out of school, you think you can do it all on your own, but as I've gotten older, there, there's rarely things in life that that you can do just by yourself. So having a partnership and having the right person to push you and to make you better is, is key to being successful. So l let me ask you a, que a follow-up question to that. So a lot of times um, people around you, whether it be staff or, or other people in the industry, might think you're proceeding too far ahead. How do you get buy-in from people when, when you, they think that you're maybe four steps ahead when you should only be two? I I kind of go with with my gut on things. I'm a I'm a fire ready aim kind of guy. Um, I listen. If there's any bit of advice, is is really listen to what your gut says um, in certain situations. But I don't really worry about what other people think. And probably my accountant, <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't think I'm very smart sometimes. But it's, I literally it's just always... came from my meeting with my accountant. And, and it's like every time, I don't know about you, but I sit there every time, feel it's like I'm being lectured in, in, in school every time. I forgot to yeah, tell you about the it, two companies I just started. <laughs> it, was, it was my discussion today. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite one is when I had the banker come down for his visit. And of course, I have this whole place built out with new equipment. He goes, what happened? <laughs> so I didn't know about this. Um, but yeah, I, I think that... Um, if you, when you're making decisions, it, as they say, it, you know, gut decisions um, are important. And uh, if you go with your heart, you can't go wrong. Totally agree. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, when Dave was asking the question, the first thing, first thing I was thinking of was you just ignore what everybody else is saying, <laughs> right? Because I think those of us who are, are, are trying to push the envelopes, oftentimes there's a flip side to that, which is uh, we don't really care what other people think too much, right? Yeah, and no matter how hard you try and how well you do or, you know, make mistakes along the way, you're always going to have someone that is going to try to drag you down, and I just try to look past that. I completely agree. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the podcast. It's so wonderful to be uh, to be uh, talking with another sort of like-minded dentist, um, and I, don't, I think Dave was going to wrap up with something. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Bush, just tell me, tell me real quickly. I know you've got this um, volunteer opportunity in your market, and so I wanted you to um, tell our listeners a little bit about it before before we let you go, because I thought that was a really cool way to 
uh, volunteer your time and efforts in, in the dental community? Yeah, I, there's a, I started a program called Team Smile. It's teamsmile.org. It's a way to do uh, dental missionary work right here in our own country and to partner with uh, your local sports team, or whether it be in North Carolina or Florida or um, L.A., we partner with professional sports teams to bring all our mobile equipment out to the stadium. Um, we get players to come out and, and the cheerleaders and the mascot, and we get the local dentists. Uh, we put them in team scrubs. So, for instance, the Los Angeles um, Chargers are one of our teams. And we get the doctors just to come out and volunteer their time and to work on underserved kids, kids that may have never been a dentist. And being around the country, there's so much need to hear that gets overlooked. And I had been inspired by the Diamante driver story back in 2007, the 12 year old boy in Maryland that had passed away from not having a, a primary tooth extracted that was abscessed and his mother's Medicare had lapsed. So she took him to the hospital and then she showed up at the hospital the next day and he, he had passed away just from something simple like that. And I know every dentist and hygienist and dental assistant has a big heart to give back um, they just don't know how to. And kind of in halfway through my career, I, I always knew I wanted to, to volunteer some way. So I was trying to figure out a way to how to get people excited about volunteering in professional sports, which I think is the fabric of many in all of our communities. I mean, you go down the street and you see a Patrick Mahomes jersey or you see a Cam Newton or so forth. People get excited about that. And I thought, in order to be successful with this, we're going to have to make it fun and we're going to have to make it easy. And that's precisely what Team Smile does is make it fun and easy. Doctors just come out with their staff. We have the kids and parents sign off on waivers for video or photos and the doctors come out and volunteer their time. We usually can do about 250000 to $300,000 worth of assorted dentistry from cosmetic dentistry to root canal treatments to those kinds of things the players will take pictures with the volunteers and the kids so it's kind of a big t dental tailgate without without the beer but it's fun <laughs> it's definitely fun yeah, uh, everybody wants to so tailgate without the beer <laughs> with, the, with the kansas city chiefs 14 years ago um with no intention to to want to you know grow it nationally but over the years, um, we spread from the, the Chiefs to the Royals, from the Royals to the Chicago Bears to the Saints. And once you start telling the story, somebody always knows somebody else with some team. So now we have over 70% of the NFL. We have um, Major League Baseball. We have eight to 10 teams, uh, NHL hockey, the NBA, and even for five years, we worked with Justin Timberlake out at the golf course for a PGA event that he had out in Vegas and the Shriners Hospital for Children. So we actually were doing dentistry on the 18th green. So I, I can't think of a better place to do <laughs> dentistry than outside. Uh, and we had golfers finding autographs for the kids. Justin Timberlake uh, did a golf clinic for the kids. So um, you'd be surprised that, you know, people say secretly they don't like the dentist or they don't like going to the dentist. I think they're all uh, do. And, and I can tell by the support that we get from from the community outside the dental community. So it's, it's a huge group effort. Um, and especially for people who want to volunteer but are afraid to travel, it's a great opportunity for people to give back without having to travel very far. Well, well that's, that's great. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, again, I just very much appreciate you being on the podcast. So uh, yeah, keep up the great work and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Bush. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. I also want to remind you to rate and review us wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you have suggestions or comments, please visit theoperatory.com and drop us a line. Again, I'm Dr. Brian Laskin, host of The Operatory. Thanks for listening. I look forward to speaking with you next week.